Well, hello. Hey, family. Happy Valentine's Day. Almost, okay? Today is your day. Let me tell you, I have been in such a place. I've been in such a place of sweet, sweet, uh, refreshing joy and love and peace. Just peace that passes all understanding. So let me just back up a little bit first. I am Prophetess Tabitha Pittman. I'm so excited to be here with you today. So excited. This is not my song. I don't own the rights to this song. This is um, William McDowell with Holding Nothing. And I want you to come to a place today where you are withholding nothing from God, nothing, but surrendering all, surrendering all to him. When you surrender in worship, that's when you can get what you need from him. When you surrender and you submit to the authority of Jehovah Jireh, that's when he can provide. When you surrender to the love in Christ Jesus, I tell you what, that's when you'll have the love and the success to thrive, my God. I just, listen, God wants you to know that you can thrive in him. There's so much that he wants to give to you. If you'll just surrender all to him today, glory to God, glory to God. Listen, I just want to come by here and let you know that God is speaking more than you are listening. Do you want to hear from God? Do you want to hear from him? Because he's trying to get a word through to you. He's trying to get a message through to you. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm telling you that God wants to, he wants to bless you tremendously and exceedingly above all that you could ask or think. On this February, 2022, God has blessings that he's pouring out to you and you and you. I'm telling you, he's doing miraculous things. But you, it requires surrender. It requires relationship. See, when you surrender to someone, that means that you are submitted to them. That means that you got to come to a place where you are vulnerable. You're vulnerable. And that's when you can love, right? That's when you can get in his face and in that place. Vulnerability. You got to be vulnerable to love. And when you are vulnerable, that's when you can, you can see that someone is literally blessings. Pastor Shelton, good to see you. You can literally see that they are, they are uh, willing to be vulnerable. And when you're willing to be vulnerable, that's when you can build trust. Because without trust, you can't be intimate with even God. Yes, that principle works really well in the world, but I'm telling you today that you can give yourself away to Christ Jesus and he can manifest blessings. See, he's revealing things today. Listen, I have a new book out called Hearing from God because I kept hearing people say, well, Tabitha, I'm not sure if it's me. I'm not sure if it's the enemy. I'm not sure if it's God. And so I want you to know that God is saying, I want to cultivate a relationship with you, son. I want to cultivate a relationship with you, daughter. But you do have to surrender. Listen, I'm going to share with you some secrets to hearing God, hearing from God. And you can be and rest assured that it is him. It's not you because he wants you to be confident he wants you to be confident that it is him that you're hearing. So here it is. A relationship is only as strong as the communication within that relationship. Listen, for those of us who are married and you've been married longer than a, a year or so, you know that communication is vital. It's vital. And so I want you to know that that's true in any relationship. And it's a key. Prayer is a key. The privilege, the honor to commune with the Father through Christ Jesus. It's a, it's a privilege so that we're clear. It's not a right. It's a privilege, kind of like a driver's license. 
my God, listen, it's a, it's a privilege. Everybody doesn't have a driver's license, see? But if you're a born again believer, you've been blood washed, fire baptized. Come on, y'all. If you've been in that place, if you've been in that place, you have access. The veil has been torn. You have access. A direct connect. We used to have next tails. I say this all the time, but you got a direct connect. See, see, listen, when you, when you walked with him for a little while, you don't take this thing called prayer for granted. <laughs> you become a gap dweller willingly. You stand in the gap for people. You recognize yourself as a priest and a king. Come on, y'all. You recognize yourself as a, a royal priesthood. My God. See, my bishop preached on that today, on the royal priesthood. And I want you to know that there's places in Christ. See, it's, it's good to be beside him. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. But how many of you know that when you dwell in him, when you abide in Christ and Christ in you, hallelujah, he is the vine and we are the branches. When you get that kind of relationship with him, whew, that's a sweet, sweet place, y'all. Listen, God wants to speak to you. He wants to share some things with you. He wants to commune with you. He wants you to be confident that it is him who has given you this word, that thought. It's him. And the Bible is full of his communication with men and women from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Come on, y'all, from, from the priest to the harlots. Yeah. He, he's no respecter of persons. I like to say it like this. His grace is promiscuous. It'll go to anybody. He's looking for you. I have a lot of scripture that can back it up. <laughs> but I want you to know that Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Mm. I know them and they follow me. See, see, he knows you. It's an intimate relationship. When, when a woman has a baby and, and we deliver that baby and, and, and oftentimes people may see the baby and they see your connection with him or her and that baby looks at you and you know that he or she recognizes your voice because they've been in you and they've heard you. Your voice resonates with them. It calls to them. See, see, I want to come by here tonight and let somebody know that his deep is calling unto your deep. Maybe you're sitting here, and I didn't come here for this. God knows I didn't. But maybe you're sitting here and you're saying, Tabitha, I haven't heard from him in so long. I, I'm in a place where, where it feels like my ears are clogged up. Listen, God will send the prophetess by here today. Mm. I'm drinking from a very special cup today. This is in honor of my, <laughs> my friend, my sister, who's going on to glory. Linda Swift gave me this cup a few years ago. Keep calm and trust God. Keep calm and trust God. Keep calm and trust him that he would send somebody by here just for you so that you would be able to hear him clearly for yourself. You don't have to wait for someone else you can see back in the old testament days in those biblical days they they had to go to the priest to make intercession for them to intercede for they and, and even the the animals were a sacrifice the animals were in the gap right but now we have a direct connection because of the holy spirit Whew. listen mm. Every believer, every born again believer has the capacity, the ability to hear from God. You have this capacity. We need help learning how to recognize his voice though. And that's what happens when, when sometimes we, we rely so much on other people to tell us what God said. And if they had a bad day, if they didn't hear clearly, <laughs> glory, uh, you may get the wrong word or you may question their word. 
And there's nothing wrong with getting a prophetic word. Because those of us who are prophets, we know that all prophets are intercessors. So we stand in the gap for people because it's what we've been called to do. We are the mouthpiece of God in the earth realm to manifest, to be a representation of Christ in the earth. And so we don't take that part lightly, but I want you to develop, and I'm going to give you some secrets to developing the ability to communicate with God for yourself. And these are principles that I've learned along the way, but I want to share them with you from a very, very um, familiar passage. Habakkuk 2, verses 1 and 2. Some of us know this very well, but I'm going to read it from the New King James Version, glory to God. And then I'm going to refer back to my notes because I want you to know that you know, and you'll sha na na, because you know, everybody ain't watching the game right now. Listen, somebody will say, Tabitha, I need to hear from God. Is he speaking? Is he only speaking to you, Tabitha? Am I even able to access him? Listen, God has a word just for you. He wants to whisper in your ear, just like he whispers in mine, just like he whispers in your pastor and your mother and your grandmother and grandfather. See, this thing that God has given you access to. Oh, don't take it for granted. No, 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 no. Don't take it for granted. God has something that he wants to do just for you. Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2. And, and, and I'm going to just paraphrase a few points. I will stand on my guard. I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me. Then the Lord answered me and said, record the vision. These four points are four secrets that I, I uh, expand upon in my book, Hearing from God. But I want to give you some high level here in this, um, this video. Habakkuk was a key prophet during the days of Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel. He continued to, uh, this, this part of Judah continued to decline in idolatry, turning to their idols and turning their backs on God. Maybe that's familiar to you. Maybe that sounds like where we are today in America. Habakkuk prays, asking the Lord to intervene. See, he was a natural intercessor. He's saying, Lord, you got to do something about this. It's not right. And this short three chapter book is God's response detailing the impending captivity of Judah. The impending captivity of Judah by the Babylonians. Some people see America as Babylon, but we're not going into that today. But I want you to know that. So maybe you remember King Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel. Maybe the Lord used the king to bring punishment to Israel for 70 years. 70 years and then restore the nation back to himself. See, God's in a place and a space where he wants to restore you back to himself. He wants to restore you. He wants to restore your children and your children's children for three and four generations back to himself. But he's got to know that you hear him. You've got to have a desire to have a relationship with him. There's a few places you can start. You can get in your word. Don't just read it for yourself or hear it from somebody else, but read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Get in your word. Now you have the setting. I, I, I like to kind of set this thing up for people, right? So that you can see it almost in 3D in your spiritual mind, with your spiritual eye. You can see the setting. Right. And Habakkuk's desperate prayers, Lord, restore the people, almost like Moses did. He said, Lord, don't 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 wipe them out. God, made, he made a deal with Moses. He said, look, I'm going to wipe the whole thing out. Mm. Can't nobody tell it like prophet is cold. But he said, I'm going to wipe the whole thing out. And Moses said, no, 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 Lord, don't wipe it out. Don't wipe the people out. See, when you get desperate for God to move on behalf of the people that you stand in the gap for, on behalf of your backslidden son, on behalf of your unsaved husband, on behalf of your uncles in alcoholism, on behalf of your cousins in drugs, come on, y'all. Mm, my God, when you get desperate, you'll say, Lord, don't wipe them out. Lord, don't let my brother die. Lord, don't let the infirmity take over my cousin. Lord. 
I'll stand in the gap. I'll take it back to the cross. I'll bury it in you, Christ. It's the part of intercession, right? That says we got to get in on behalf of the people that we know and love. Listen, it's Valentine's Day. And I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so much that he will send the prophet by. And I just want to let you know that your attention, your sharing, your detail, your inviting people to this broadcast is in fact giving the prophet a glass of water. And if you give the prophet a glass of water, my God in heaven, I'm telling you that you shall receive the prophet's reward. Listen. Habakkuk prayed desperate prayers, intercessory prayers, and he began to say to the people and say to God, he sought to communicate with the Lord on behalf of them, on behalf of this matter. And in this teaching, this is what he's doing. So number one, Habakkuk said that he needed to stand at his guard. Habakkuk was a watchman. There are a lot of you that are also watchmen, watch women on the wall, interceding for your family interceding and standing in the gap, focusing on the Lord's reply. <laughs> and in the, the South, they would say, what say you, Jesus? Jesus, what say you? I'm going to stand here, Lord, and I'm going to watch. See, the watchtower was a place of, of high position so that he could see the enemy as they approached and he could notify the body. He could notify the city. He could notify the people that the enemy was approaching. And so they knew how to pray. They knew how to fight. They knew how to war. I believe some of you are in spiritual warfare even now. And I'm telling you that God is saying, listen to the watchman. Be a watchman. If you see something, say something. Come on, y'all. The watchtower is a quiet place. Oh, yeah, it's a quiet place. It can even be a lonely place. See, because everybody ain't praying like they say they are. Listen, to us, this represents a quiet place or a place of your prayer closet, your quiet place of prayer. The principle from this verse is this. I must learn to still my mind. I must quiet out the noise. I must settle down the emotions so I can hear, so I can sense God's presence, mm. his flow of thoughts. God's flow, not Tabitha's. God's thoughts, not mine. Mm. God's will be done, not mine. Some of y'all get that later. This is where we connect to the Holy Spirit. We connect and we come into that place of quiet and calm and rest. But today God gave me sweet peace. You know, the kind of peace that passes all understanding. <laughs> ah, Bishop White, rest in peace. He used to sing a song. He'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on the Lord. That's a scripture over from Isaiah, but I want you to know there's a song ooh, that details it so beautifully in my mind. I can just hear it. I was 13, 14 years old, but the Holy Spirit is just recalling it to me right now. I want you to know that, that the watchtower, the watchman, uh, he has to dwell in a place of peace. And so his mind and his emotions, his thoughts have to be focused on the Lord. Mm. In that place of peace is a place of spontaneous flow. Mm. The Holy Spirit, he, he can move in that place in you. He can deposit in your, in your spirit, the, the new spirit that came when you got salvation. Come on, y'all. Uh, not, not the old Tabitha, not the old man, but the new spirit that came. Uh, because see, all things, behold, all things become new, right? The, the new 
Oh, it's the new, that, that new of 2022. Step into your new of 2022. Y'all know I've been saying that the whole year, ha. Uh, but I want you to know that Jesus himself said in John 7 and 37, he calls this the supernatural flow of living waters, mm. living rivers that are flowing. I told y'all last week that I was stepping into the rivers and the Lord just showed me this beautiful waterfall. And the white caps on the waterfall were jewels. My God. Mm. And as I stepped in the water, I could see and experience him in the new way, in the washing, in the cleansing. Mm. Listen, we don't have to stir up God, okay? We don't have to stir up the water because it's living water. So it's flowing and it's flowing and it's flowing. I want to encourage you today to step into the flow. <laughs> I'm trying to teach this thing, Lord, but I'm just so full. Step into the flow. Step into the flow so that you can connect with the Holy Spirit. Connect with the gift of the Holy Spirit that's within you. Ah, the Holy Spirit just brings stillness. And if you could just remain there in the water, just remain there in the water. Ooh, this is, this is what abiding is all about. It's remaining in the water, remaining in the presence of God, my God. I know some people are probably saying, Tabitha, look, it's hard for me to get quiet. It's hard for me to shut out the noise. It's hard for me to turn off the thoughts of everything around me. The pandemic, my spouse, my children, my job, people, things, notifications on your phone. I get it. I get it. But I want you to practice getting quiet so you can stay and connect and stay in the flow of the Holy Spirit. Connect and stay in the flow. Sometimes it's a worship song and you guys often hear me playing soaking music, but you can meditate on the scriptures. Here's a good one. Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know. And if you'll just meditate on that and meditate on it, God will show you. He'll bring that peace to you. I'm not saying it's going to come in 30 seconds. I'm not saying it's going to come in five minutes. But if you'll just focus on it, focus on the quiet, focus on the be still and know. See, that word know there literally means experience him. Mm. Oh, what it's like when we experience God, when we get in his presence and we experience him in the fullness of him, right? Because in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. Get in the water, experience him, experience him, meditate on the scriptures. The Bible says we should meditate on his word day and night, right? So meditate on the scriptures. Mm. You know how you know that you've connected because there's such a peace and a calm in your spirit. That's how you know. That's how you know that you know that you know, right? And, and the Lord wants to keep your focus there. That's a beautiful place when you're focused on what he wants you to focus on, when you focus on him. And, and, and when those thoughts of unworthiness come, you know you have to take those thoughts, according to 1 Corinthians, you have to take them captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus, right? And so you, and sometimes you gotta repent, right? Repent of those negative thoughts, repent, and then receive the washing of the blood again. Receive it again. Uh, see God putting on his robe of righteousness. See yourself as forgiven mm, in the presence of God, according to Isaiah 61 and 10. See yourself there. See, listen, uh, you keep, I know I keep saying, Tabitha, what do you mean see myself, see myself? Listen, if you close your eyes with me right now, I'm going to 
if I were a betting woman, which I'm not, but I'm going to guarantee you that you can envision your couch. You can envision your kitchen. If you close your eyes, you know exactly what it looks like. And so here it is. After Habakkuk settled into his quiet place, the guard post, noticed that this is what he did next. He said, I will keep watch to see. So there, there's a place that he can see with his spiritual eye. There's a place that you can see God with your spiritual eyes. What was he looking at, y'all? His gaze was fixed. His eyes were fixed on the Lord, his spiritual eye. As we come to that place of stillness, still praying, right? We're fixed on the heart. You fix your heart on God. It's critical that we fix our heart, fix our gaze on Christ when we come into his presence. What does Jesus look like to you? Do you envision him wearing white robes and sandals? I don't know. Listen, do you see him in modern clothes? Does he have on a suit? Does he have on a khaki pants? I don't know. What do you see him looking like? Because your vision, right, is, he, is you have to see it with your heart. Listen, he is always there with you. You've got to see him for yourself. You've got to see him. Envision him sitting next to you in the quiet place, in your prayer closet. I, I wanted to try to teach this as much as possible because God wants you to know that you can hear him. You can hear him for yourself. In Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2, the apostle Paul exhorts us to set our hearts and mind on Christ Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, right? We know these things. He also teaches us to fix our eyes on what is unseen, right? So we're focused on heaven on, and keeping our eyes on heavenly things, on placing our eyes on things above, right? Depending on your translation. But I want you to know that you can do that by simply closing your eyes and focusing on what God would have you to focus on. What is that to you? What is that today? throughout your day, not just in your quiet time. See, I often tell people that, that God, he's with me all the time. I, I can count on him in the car. I can count on it. He's going to give me a download. I'm going to focus, right? I'm focused on driving, but I'm saying, Lord, disrupt my day for your glory. Mm. And he does just that. Listen, if you can imagine that God is with you in all of these places and spaces, you can truly experience him as Emmanuel. That is God with us. See, you see, when you go to these different places in Christ, right, you can experience him on different levels, in different dimensions, right? Because in my father's house are many mansions. These are dimensions in, in Christ Jesus because we're in him, right? It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. I wanted to give it, give it some, some simplicity and not overcomplicate it because some people overcomplicate things. They over-spiritualize things. And God is saying, it's just a conversation. I'm talking to you. So listen, envision him. Envision him. You know what? Let's make it even easier because a lot of us know the stories from when we were children, right? And our imagination was a lot more easily uh, accessed. So can you envision Jesus feeding the 5,000? Can you envision him speaking to the woman at the well? Are you there with him? Are you in the crowd? Are you a disciple? What does it look like? to be in the scene with him, right? This is the envisioning. This is what it looks like when you use your spiritual eyes to see, right? Just like Habakkuk did. And so you already have this ability to use your vision. Don't let anyone cause you to doubt. And so that brings me to this. Focus on the reality of the Lord. Focus on it. The true biblical scenes and seeing how the Lord is working in a situation. Here's point number three. 
I'm coming around third base, y'all. I'm almost to home. Habakkuk came to a place of stillness in his thoughts and emotions. He fixed his eyes on the Lord. The next thing he did was watch the Lord, watch to see what the Lord would speak. He's seeing him. He's, he's seeing him seated at the right hand of the Father. He's watching to see him speak, right? So don't miss that. Don't miss it. He's looking, he's looking at the Lord, and then he hears him. He's looking and then he hears. These things are partnered. I, I see and then I hear. That's the next principle. When we connect with the Holy Spirit, our eyes are on Jesus. We then listen to his voice, right? Flowing in the spontaneous thoughts. Spontaneous thoughts. God's inner voice comes to us as a spontaneous thought, a vision, a feeling, or impression that lights upon our mind. <laughs> I just love that. Look, I know I get excited. I get excited about this. This, this amps me up. <laughs> so guess what? You've already heard God speaking to you. I know nobody, <laughs> you're like, wait, what, Tabitha? What did you say? You've already heard him. Ask yourself, how many times have you heard this or used a phrase similar to one or more of these? See, listen, I was just at Target today. And as I was driving, looking for a spot, I had taken off my heels. <laughs> Y'all know how I do. And I put on my tennis shoes, right? And I was driving, but I still didn't want to park terribly far away from uh, the entrance. But as I was driving, the Lord showed me someone and he said, tell him that I'm going to use his hands in a mighty way and his children are going to dream dreams and I'm going to pull him back to me because he used to be close to me. Now this man is in the parking lot, y'all. I'm like, Lord, is this why you brought me to Target? <laughs> like I passed the Target on my way to this one, but that's how the Lord will use you when you hear his voice. And so I told the young man, I said, excuse me, do you have a minute? <laughs> I'm driving. <laughs> he, he's loading up his family. And I told him what the Lord said. He said, wow, I've been looking for a church. Where, where do you go to church? And I said, I go to Embassy Covenant Metro Detroit. I said, it's in Wall Lake, but a church that's live is worth the drive. <laughs> He said, I live in White Lake, so that's not too far from me. I said, wow, God. So I wrote the address down to the church. <laughs> and I told him what the Lord said, and he said, I needed to hear that. The Lord uses you for other people, not just so that you can hear it. But maybe you said, I felt impressed to go a different way. That's the Lord speaking to you. Maybe for some reason, people always pour out their whole life story to you. That's the Lord using you, speaking to you, right? You give that person a word of encouragement at the grocery store. And you don't know them from Adam Alley Cat. But the Lord would use you like that, right? This is it. This is You've already heard him. And maybe you say, okay. I didn't even know the answer because I want to I want to reach the masses. Maybe you're in school and you're listening to me. And you said, Tabitha, I don't know how I got the answer. I, the, I just heard I just that answer just jumped off the page to me. That's the Lord speaking to you. It's the free flow of the thoughts. When any of these things happen to you, that was God's voice. And what did his voice sound like to you? Was there an inner audible voice? Maybe. Or was it the spontaneous thoughts bubbling up? You know, the Ruach. The Nabi, mm. y'all go study that later or join my prophetic class. That's a better way. Uh, starting the first week of March. But I want you to know that God is speaking to you. You can hear him. Most of you would say it was the spontaneous thoughts. And as we quiet down, connecting with the Holy Spirit, the key here is to remain in faith. Remain in faith. Listen. Some of us question it. Lord, was that, the, was that the pizza? Was that the nacho cheese? Was it the spare ribs, Jesus? What was, was that? Was that you, Lord? Or was that me? 
Or was that the enemy? See, God is always going to confirm what he speaks to you with his word. So what does that mean, prophetess? That means that you've got to have this word in your spirit. you got to have it in your sha na na. That way, he'll bring it back to your remembrance. But he can't bring something back to your remembrance that you don't have inside of you, right? So feed your spirit man the word of God on a daily basis, okay? So there's that. Remain in faith. Because guess what? Doubt is the enemy of hearing from God. Here's number four. It's home base time, y'all. Referring back to our friend Habakkuk, he then was told to record the vision. So in other words, as he tuned into the flow of the spontaneous thought, after he had quieted his mind, right, he was focused on the Lord. And then when he could hear what the Lord was saying, he began to journal it. He began to write it out. I have a dream journal. I have a prayer journal, right? Prayers that have been answered. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We, we got to see it like that. You got to write the vision. Write the vision and make it plain. Some people call this journaling or two-way dialogue. This principle is to write out the prayers and record God's response. See, some of us already go into prayer and get spiritual diarrhea. Diarrhea of the mouth is what I like to call it, right? We just tell God, we just lay everything at his feet. But wait to listen. See, he said, I watch to see and I hear, right? I see that I hear what he has to say. So then we write it. Write it out. It's just that simple. Listen, maybe journaling isn't that appealing to you. <laughs> but I want to tell you that your phone can be a big distraction. So we don't want to use the phone, right? All the notifications, squirrel off, whatever it is. But write it out. Write the vision. Make it plain so the readers who read it can run with it, right? So this is what it's about. I know this because we have King David over in the Psalms who dialogued. And, and, and transcribed all of the thoughts, all of the things that he heard the Lord speaking, David wrote them out. And now we, thousands of years later, are using the same words that he wrote. And we're using them and applying them to our life, right? And so David begins to pour out his heart and his troubles to the Lord. And then all of a sudden there's a shift. Oh, God wants to shift some things. He's shifting the atmosphere. He's shifting the environment. Every time you come to God and you sit and you wait and you quiet yourself, you quiet out the drama, you quiet out the noise, you quiet out all the, the other perspectives, God can shift. He wants to shift some things. If you'll just wait to hear from him. Wait to hear from him. I know, I know, sometimes our patience gets tried. But God wants to shift the atmosphere. He wants to change your attitude. He wants to speak life and truth into your situation. He wants to whisper sweet nothings in your ear. See, he's the lover of your soul. And he wants to shift, shift. For those of us who used to drive standards, stick shifts. God wants to take it out of second, put it into third. Come on, y'all. Fourth and fifth, some of the new cars even have a sixth gear. My God, he wants to change gears for you. Change the gears of your mind. Change the shift of your situation. And he's modeling to us that he wrote out his petitions and his prayers and then simply gave them to the Lord and the Lord answered him. There are two important things I want you to get if you don't get anything else from this teaching tonight. One, we must become still and properly focused on the Lord, Jesus. And if we're going to hear from Jesus, these are two things that are required. Get still and focus on Jesus. Somebody will just put that in the chat. Get still and focus on Jesus. If you're not still and properly focused on Jesus, you're liable to hear your own thoughts and receive an impure flow. Intuitive flow comes when our eyes are focused on the Lord 
If you fix your eyes on Jesus, the flow comes from Jesus. If you fix your eyes on some desire of your heart, like my Porsche Cayenne, <laughs> the flow will come from me. And here's what's dangerous about that. We always want to pray back the will of God, right? Because he, see, he's tied to his will. The Bible teaches us that he honors his word above his name. So we want those words, we want those that flow to come from him because he has to honor it. He's not a man that he would lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. He has to honor that thing. He has to honor his words. Come on, y'all. The Bible also teaches us that before one drop of his word will fail, heaven and earth will pass away. That's powerful. That's powerful. So with improper focus, I might mistakenly record the Lord's response, right, to my desire instead of his. Our focus on Jesus is the secret to hearing his voice. Again, I dialogue and I expound on a lot of these things in my book, Hearing from God. The link is in the bio. Please go get it. It's an ebook, but I pray that it will bless you and bless you indeed. It will enlarge your territory and enrich your relationship with Christ. So here's the second thing that I want you to remember. As you begin to journal and record your two-way dialogue, two-way, what you say to him and what he responds to you saying, watch out for doubt. Doubt will hinder you, but you simply have to take captive your thoughts. Take your thoughts captive, throw it off, throw off every weight that so easily besets you, right? And then remain in faith. Remain in faith, remind yourself that communicating with the Lord is a biblical concept. It's biblical. It's not Tabitha saying, it's not your pastor saying, your mom saying, it's biblical. And so you can stand on it. Come on, y'all. And it's the desire of God's heart for your life. So you can hear from God. Once the flow is over and you've recorded everything, you sense the Lord saying, Go back and test the word, right? The Bible teaches us that we try the spirit. You're right, by the spirit. So go back and test it. Test it by his written word, the logos word, right? Go back and test it. Test it with your spiritual mentors, right? If you have a spiritual mother or father, if you have a prophetic mentor, I'm a prophetic mentor to a few young ladies. Shout out to Renee and uh, Tamara and... Yeah, Tamara. <laughs> Shout out to my, uh, even Selena. Hey, girl, hey. Um, but a prophetic mentor in your life, right? And so then you can help them. Let him finish speaking to you through these people. And guess what? It's going to bless you, and it's also going to bless them that they're able to confirm you. So now put a big smile on your face. And go and try these things. You may say, Tabitha, I need some help. I want first to encourage you to get the book. Again, the link is in the bio. And then subscribe to my YouTube channel because I do these teaching as the Holy Spirit leads me. And this is such a time. Such a time as this where you need to be able to communicate with God for yourself. Don't wait. You don't have to rely on anyone else. He wants you to know that you can hear him for yourself. It's a fact. I have the word to prove it. <laughs> so seek his face and practice the suggestions that I've made in this video. Continue to seek ye first according to Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And all means all, right? Not one, two, not a few, all. He wants a relationship, not religion, not tradition, relationship.
And relationship comes from conversation. Again, a relationship is only as strong as the communication within it. God wants to communicate with you. Direct connect for yourself. Listen, I'm Prophetess Tabitha Pittman. I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for subscribing. Turn on the notifications so that you get notified each and every time I go live with these teachings. And know that God loves you very much. If you're watching and it is February 22, or if you're catching the replay at another time, happy Valentine's Day. God is going to bless you and bless you indeed. So now I just want to seal these words with the blood of Jesus. I want to pray over you. Open a, even a portal. So I decree by the authority of Christ Jesus, I decree love over your life. I declare that the love of Christ Jesus will literally invade every space that you come into. I declare that God's love will be magnetic and it will draw people to you so that you can lift him up and all men will be drawn unto him. I decree and declare that this love of Christ Jesus, hallelujah, will be a guide for you that they will know you by the love that you have for other people. I declare that the love of Christ Jesus will continue to, to repair breaches and rebuild bridges in your life with the people you love the most. I declare that God's love will be everything you need, that you won't have a place of despair or concern that God is not there. His love will be a comfort. His love will be a shield. I declare that his love will engulf and envelop you. May it continue to chase you down by favor and grace and mercy. In Jesus' mighty name, may you hear him ever so clearly. May the scales be removed from your eyes and your ears be unclogged to hear the voice of the Lord. In Jesus' name, it is so, and so it is, and so shall it be. It cannot be undone. I bless you in Jesus' name. Have a great night.